NASA has been gearing up to return astronauts to the moon for the first time in more than half a century. Seven, six, five, four stage engine start and lift off of Artemis One. NASA's Artemis spacecraft has begun its first orbit of the moon. This site in South Africa will soon be a key part of NASA's history-making return to the moon and beyond. The US and China engage in a strategic high-stakes competition that extends beyond conventional or traditional war zones. This rivalry is playing out in arenas such as space exploration and technology, where each nation maneuvers through rules and regulations to secure dominance. I think the space race is really between us and China. I don't want uh, China to get to the South Pole first. Both countries aim to make history by sending the first humans to explore the region near the lunar South Pole. Despite their shared goal, the US and China are unable to assist or collaborate on their missions. Here's why. In 2011, US Republican Senator Frank Wolf banned space cooperation between the United States and China by passing the Wolf Amendment. The Wolf Amendment bans scientific cooperation between China and NASA. South Africa will simultaneously collaborate and assist both the US and China separately on their missions. Why is returning to the moon so important? Both the US and China aim to return to the moon for scientific discovery and resource exploitation. Both nations see this as part of their technological advancements and geopolitical influence, viewing it as a crucial step towards making humanity a multi-planetary species. Whoever gets to establish a significant lunar presence is making a statement about their political system, about their economic system, about who is ahead in the geopolitical competition. Space exploration has led to numerous innovations that we all use daily. Here are some examples. The memory foam inside your mattresses, pillows, and even shoes, it was originally developed for cushioning in spacecraft. Scratch-resistant lenses, now used in eyeglasses and sunglasses, which were originally developed for astronaut helmets. This includes fire-resistant materials, now used in spacesuits and spacecraft, can now be found in fire-resistant clothing and building materials. The most important part is microprocessors. The brains of computers in your smartphone were initially developed for space missions. In this video, we'll look at South Africa's role in the upcoming missions to the moon. The Artemis III by the United States and the ILRS by China. According to Space in Africa, the industry is projected to grow more than 16%, reaching a market valuation of 22.64 billion US dollars by 2026. 15 African nations have already invested 4.71 billion US dollars in 58 satellite projects, and they plan to develop 105 more satellites in the next three years. Now, on to the Adamus 3 by the United States. Adamus 3, currently planned for 2026, will mark humanity's first return to the lunar surface in more than 50 years. It's been 50 years since we've been to the moon, and we've got a great program called Artemis. We're going back. There will be a planned crew size of four at a distance of around 10,300 kilometers with members Reed Wiseman, Victor Glover, Christina Quash, and Jeremy Hansen and a mission of duration of around 10 days. The South African Space Agency has teamed up with NASA for the project to build a lunar exploration ground site. The Adamus 2 or Exploration Mission 2 will however launch from the Kennedy Space Center Launch Complex 39B in the United States. The communications facility in the Karoo based Machis Fontaine is being constructed in South Africa and will assist in putting the first woman and the person of color on the moon. The South African Space Agency's main focus will be communications facility will be for the Adamus 3 project. South Africa's space industry has taken one small but significant step, breaking ground in the first in Africa deep space ground station. You may be wondering what lunar exploration ground sites are and why the US needs the Machis Fontaine based in South Africa if they're going to launch the Adamus 3. The Lunar Exploration Ground Sites, or LEGS, are several NASA space communication complexes created to support lunar exploration. The LEGS missions is to provide direct-to-Earth communication. The Machis Fontaine in South Africa is one of these sites. The Deep Space Ground Station will help NASA 
check missions to the moon and Mars. NASA would not come to South Africa uh, if they didn't feel that we have capacities to do the work that they want us to do in partnership with them. The Adamus program plans to create a sustained presence at the moon to test technologies needed for the journey onto Mars. NASA aims to launch astronauts to Mars by 2030 or early 2040s, according to space.com. And what is SANSA and where is it located? The mission for the South African National Space Agency, SANSA, officially established in 2010, is to deliver space-related services and products for South Africa. The agency is located in the coastal town of Hermanus in the Western Cape of South Africa. South Africa will also assist and collaborate with China on the mission to the moon and eventually Mars through the IRRS, the International Lunar Research Station. Recently, China and South Africa signed an MOU on a space project. On September 1st, 2023, South Africa joined the IRRS, which included Russia, Venezuela, Azerbaijan, Pakistan, Belarus, Egypt, Thailand, Nicaragua, Serbia, and Kazakhstan. This is following the BRICS Space Agency's agreement for cooperation in remote sensing satellite data sharing that took place on August 18, 2021. As of 2022, only 13 African countries have a total of 48 satellites. Of these, six were built by China and one by the United States. Experts emphasize the satellite communication is crucial for addressing the connectivity gap across the continent. China played a significant role in the development launching of Nigeria's first communication satellite in 2007 and its second in 2011. In 2017, China launched Algeria's first communication satellite. Tunisia became home to the first ground receiving station outside of China for the Beidou satellite navigation system in 2018. China assisted Ethiopia and Sudan in launching their first satellites in 2019. For South Africa and China, the agreement will see the Chinese Space Agency and South African Space Agency carry out extensive cooperation in the demonstration, implementation, operation, and application of the ILRS, as well as the training in other areas. The ILRS project aims to construct a permanent lunar base in the 2030s. Five major infrastructure missions using super heavy lift launchers will be launched in the 2030s to construct the base, while initially robotic, it will later host astronauts. The space industry in Africa is projected to grow significantly, and South Africa is well positioned to benefit from this growth. By collaborating with both the US and China, South African companies can gain valuable experiences and contracts. According to the 2024 African Space Budget Analysis Report, it shows that African governments have put in over 3.1 billion US dollars between 2018 and 2024 for space programs on the continent, including the administration of government space institutions and expenditures for some capital projects. South Africa stands to gain in several ways from the competition between the US and China in space exploration. The economic benefits include technological advancements. Participation in these missions allows South Africa to develop its own space technologies and expertise. This can lead to a new application of innovations that will benefit the country as a whole and maybe one day send its own crew to the moon. Desert of uh, the United States. It's uh, different, but it's very pretty out here.